and pray that you're all doing well. If you're visiting with us, we want to say it's a privilege, it's an honor to have you here, and that's a fact. I want to say if you're if you're if you are a veteran and you've served in the military, or maybe you're even active duty now, I want to ask to uh, you to stand so we can honor you for your service to our country. So if you've been if you're a veteran or an active duty, please stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. My dad served for 30 years, and I did eight years myself. And so we appreciate your guys' service. We truly do. And those that are serving, maybe raise your hand if you have family in the military right now or somebody that you know that's in the military, most of us. So we need to pray for them. Amen. For what freedoms that we have left, we got to hold on to. Absolutely. Because our freedom was, was bought with a price. Amen. And our spiritual freedom, more importantly, was bought with the eternal price, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross, shedding his blood for us, amen, and being buried and being raised on the third day. You can't just leave it at the cross. You've got to talk about the resurrection if you talk about the cross, amen, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles today, I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, and then also, too, uh, we just got one other approval through our committees for our building, or for, the, for the grounds, I mean, for the grounds. And so I think we have a couple more things that are tying up through the county. So once we hear from them, we'll let you guys know as well for housekeeping. And let me encourage you ladies also to be a part of that weekend. I think last time you guys met, you had like 28 or almost 30 ladies that came to that event. Man, that's, that's absolutely exciting and awesome. And it's a great place to forge friendships, make fellowship, man, learn and grow in the grace and, and the knowledge of God. Amen. So let me encourage you to be a part of all that our church is doing. And uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you also. Uh, for the team that, that played up here today. Amen. Boy, yes, indeed. Miss June, you did great. Awesome. Playing our organ for us. I couldn't play that if you paid me a billion dollars. <laughs> Amen. Boy. All right, well, some of you, I know have seen this, but God laid this message on my heart again. And I was just seeking the Lord, wondering why he laid it on my heart again. And I believe with all my heart the reason why. Can we can we turn these lights off right here? They, these, these are kind of like, or maybe... Yeah, if we can, we may not be able to get it on video as well, but at least people here will be able to see it a little bit better. Um, anyway, I, I just wanted people, sometimes we get, we, we get so bombarded with information, we get so focused on our problems, we have so many things coming at us like a fire hydrant. It's good just not to put God in a box. And sometimes we can put God in a box in our mind without us even realizing it. And so we need to think about all the things that the Lord does for us on a daily basis that most people don't even consider or think about. You know, and the title of this message is, Our God is an Awesome God. Now, you're going to see some things on here that are scientific. Now, this is not a science lesson. However, when the Word of God does speak on anything scientific, it's absolutely 100% accurate because God's Word is accurate. Amen? And the point is, is not to give you a science lesson, but the point is, is to, spend, is to man, stimulate your mind just to think about all the things that God does for you on a daily basis that we don't even think about. Like, for example, did you wake up this morning and say, Now, Lord, I pray with all my heart. And I know, I know the earth goes around the sun 600 million mile journey, and I just pray that we don't run into something along the way. Lord, I, I just pray that the earth doesn't wobble this way 1% or 1 degree this way or 1 degree that way because we'll burn up or we'll, freeze, or we'll freeze to death. Did you worry about that this morning? Raise your hand. You know why you didn't worry about that? Because our God is an awesome God, and he's already taken care of all that stuff, amen, so that we don't have to worry about it. However, it's good to think about all the incredible, miraculous, awesome things God does on a daily basis that we don't consider, let alone all the things that he does for us on a daily basis. So the scripture that we want to turn to is uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Well, now, now I guess I need some light to read. <laughs> Boy. I'm, I'm hurting. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> well, I'll get it together here. All right. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's dive in. Look down there at verse number 15. Now, the question in verse 15 is what I'm asking you. The question God is asking us this morning is found in verse 15 of Isaiah chapter 40. He says, Behold, the nations are a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust or fine dust of the balance. You know that little small small dust that you can just blow away brush away it's talking about that 
Now notice what he says about the nations, all the nations of the earth, all the countries, all the nations that make up the earth. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a, from a bucket, and are counted as small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isle as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All the nations before him are as nothing, and are counted to him as less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare to him? Our God is an awesome God. And the question that I want you to think about is, why would God look at planet Earth and say, all the nations of the Earth, there's a drop from a bucket, there is fine dust on my scales, and they're regarded as nothing in vanity in my eyes. Why would the Lord say that? Why does the Lord look at the planet that he made that he loves with all of his heart and say that? Because he's an awesome God, and I want you to see, as we move through this, why he says what he says and how awesome he truly is. Boy, you know, for example, most people don't consider uh, why an elephant trunk has 40,000 muscles in it because our God's an awesome God, amen? Most people don't wake up and consider what Psalm 138 or 139 says when David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Why would he say that? Well, he didn't know at the time, but we know now that our body has a hundred million, a hundred million trillion cells. And we're going to find out how big just one trillion is today. Man, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. So there's so many things that God takes care of on a daily basis, all the animals, all the people. If I were to just carve out a section of Sun City Center and say that you're responsible for everybody's life, everybody's choices, everybody's problems, you would say, Brother Dave, I can't do that with my own life hardly, let alone take care of a whole, whole neighborhood myself. Our God's an awesome God, amen? So we need to get outside the box and just remember how con in control he really is of your life and how much he truly cares about your life. For our God says the very hairs on your head are numbered. Not one sparrow falls to the ground without your heavenly Father singing. And you're worth more than many sparrows. Amen? Well, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 26, Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, because of the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one of the stars are missing. Now, just in our Milky Way galaxy, there's about 400, estimated, 450 billion stars alone. And there are billions of galaxies out there. And the Bible says he's named every one of those stars by name. And not one is missing. You know, if somebody were to challenge me, hey, come up with a thousand names, I'd have a hard time doing that. And yet God has come up with trillions of names for all of his stars and not one is missing. Amen? Just like not one hair in your head is missing. Boy. Yes, indeed. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah, or, or not Isaiah, but um, Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 5, And I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. So the word of God tells us that because of what he's made, we can know how great he is. We can see the awesomeness of God. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalm 19, verse 1 and 2. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. And the Bible tells us also in Psalm 111, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and the congregation. Listen to this. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. Boy, God tells us to study. God tells us to look at his handiwork. Why? Because he's made them to be remembered. And when you study the handiwork, when you study what God's created, you can see his invisible attributes. You can see his mightiness. You can see how awesome and how genius he really truly is. Boy, the Bible says, Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? Listen to what he says about the heavens and the earth. From God's perspective, listen to what he says now about heaven and earth. Who, in Psalm 113, who humbles himself. He humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and that are on earth. When Solomon dedicated the temple, he said, man, the heavens and the highest of heavens cannot contain you, Lord. Man, our God is an awesome God. He exists outside of creation, and he says he humbles himself and stoops into it because it's really no big deal to him because he's that awesome. Amen? Wow. Our God is truly an awesome God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's consider that thought. Our God is truly an awesome God. Father, thank you so much for this time, and I pray now 
with all my heart that you would touch me, that you would anoint me and do in me and through me what I cannot muster on my own. Lord, I just pray that this message would truly be refreshing to your people, that, Lord, it would just truly be renewed in their ears and their mind. Lord, I just pray that you'll help them to see and know your love today. I pray that you'll give them peace that surpasses understanding. I pray that this message would truly be a great comfort to your people today. And that, Lord, it would give them peace for times of head and that you would use this to solidify them, to help them. And, Lord, I pray that also you would use this message to let one here today see how awesome you truly are. Maybe they never repented of their sin and put their trust in your son, Jesus. And, Lord, you tell us in your word, for all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. And that the wages of sin is death and hell forever. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And, Lord, I pray that this would be the day that they would repent of their sin. As you tell us in Mark 1, 15, repent and believe the gospel. And they would turn to you and be saved, calling upon your name to forgive them, believing in their heart that you raised them from the dead. And, Lord, you tell us in your word, all those that call upon your name shall be saved. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 8, the Bible says, Indeed, while following the way of your judgments, O Lord, we have waited for you eagerly. Your renown is the desire of our soul. Now, that's an interesting word, that word renown. Lord, your renown is is the desire of our soul. That word renown means a glory that does not fade away. God is the only one that has glory that does not fade away. And the people were singing a song during the millennial reign saying, Lord, our greatest desire of our soul is your renown. Man, your fame. Man, your awesomeness. We want people to know who you are. As John the Baptist said, I must decrease and the Lord Jesus must increase. Amen? Boy. Let me ask you a question. What is your desire? Is your desire Jesus Christ? And is your desire for your neighbor, your family, and the world to know his power, his preeminence, and his prestige? Man, his presence and his promises. Man, his sovereignty and most of all, his salvation that he offers freely to everyone. Is that your desire this morning? Amen. If it's not, it should be. Boy, so let me ask you a question. Who do you know that's greater than God Almighty? Name one thing or someone that you can compare to him, and there's no one. Amen? In fact, it would be a sin to even try to compare anything to the Lord because he's perfectly unique. Who do you know that's more exceptional, more important, more prestigious, more powerful than the Lord? And the answer to that question is no one. Amen? How do I know? Psalm 90 verse 2 says, From everlasting to everlasting thou art God. His name and his name alone is renowned. He's the only one that retains all glory. Now, when most people think of greatness, what do they think of? Well, they kind of break it down, don't they? Well, they break it down into great wisdom. They think of people like Einstein and people like that. Someone with great works, they think of Michelangelo. Someone who's wealthy, they might think of Bill Gates or or Elon Musk. Or then, of course, there's the who's who of the world. Well, do you know so-and-so? Well, I know so-and-so. Do you know so-and-so? The who's who of the world. So when most people think of greatness, they put greatness into those categories. Well, let's look at the Lord in these categories and let's consider where he falls in line amen the bible says in psalm 140 verse 7 verse 5 great is the lord and mighty in knowledge his understanding is infinite his understanding his knowledge his wisdom is infinite and yet the book of job tells us that the lord's knowledge is perfectly complete so how can you have infinite knowledge yet be perfectly complete because god is an infinite being The Bible also says there's no knowledge, there's no wisdom, nor understanding that can ever be against the Lord. Man, praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is an awesome God, is he not? Boy. Well, let's consider not only uh, his wisdom, but let's consider his wealth. And the Bible says in Psalm 24, verse 1 of the Lord, the earth is the Lord and everything in it. Did you hear what the Bible says? He owns it all. Amen. Amen. Man, other, other uh, prophets said the heavens and the earth are the Lord's. Daniel says he gives the things of the earth to whomever he wishes. Psalm 104, verse 24, all of the earth is full of the riches of the Lord. He owns it all, lock, stock, and barrel. Amen? And there's not one billionaire or one trillionaire company on this planet that holds a candle to the wealth of the Lord. Amen? Boy, our God is an awesome God. Well, we considered his wisdom, and we considered his wealth. Now let's consider his work. Let's consider his works, and this is where we're going to park at. Let's consider the works of the Lord and all the amazing, incredible, miraculous things he does every day. Woo, boy. Genesis 1-1 says this. In the beginning, 
God created. It literally means ex nihilo, the heavens and the earth. It literally means that God created everything literally out of nothing. Now, your mind can't conceive what true nothing is. You see, right here, there's, there's molecules. There's air molecules. There's electrons and neutrons and all kinds of things right here. But he literally created everything out of nothing. What is true nothing? Boy, our God is an awesome God. Amen? Man, the Bible says in Psalm 1, uh, 13, the works of the Lord are sought out by all those who have pleasure in his works is honorable and glorious. He's made them to be remembered. Man, Isaiah verse 40, verse 15 again, behold, the nations are a drop from a bucket and are counted as small dust on the scales. Well, you know, the Bible says that the Lord stretches out the heavens and he measures the heavens by the span of his hand. Now, a span in the Bible was from the middle finger to the tip of your thumb. Now, astronomers guesstimate that the universe is eight octillion miles long. That's an eight followed by 27 zeros. Your mind can't comprehend that number. It's that big. Boy, they say that if you took a computer and it could count a billion, one billion every second, it would take that computer, I think, over a million years to count that high. Wow. And the Bible says he holds it all in the span of his hand like it's nothing, and he rolls up the sky like a scroll. Our God is an awesome God. Amen? Boy, he is. Awesome God. Wow. Well, let's dive in and let's look at some of these PowerPoints. All right, so introduction to the earth. All right, let's go to slide number two. Let's look at how much the earth weighs. All right, I was curious. And now, of course, this is a guesstimate, guys. Nobody knows the, the earth, how much the earth weighs. This is just a guesstimate that a bunch of scientists came up with. And so I went around to a couple PhDs and I said, hey, look, I, I have no idea what that number is. Can you help me out? And they couldn't help me out. And then a teenager said, all you got to do is type it in Google. So I did. All right, next slide. <laughs> Amen. And this is how much they say or guesstimate the earth weighs. Six sextillion, 585 quintillion, 600 quadrillion tons. In other words, it's so astronomical, your, your brain can't comprehend that. Boy. Now, here's the interesting thing about our God and how awesome he truly, really is. The Bible says in Job 28, verse 7, that he hangs the earth on nothing. He hangs it on nothing. Let me invite you right now to take a feather, and let me invite you to hang it right here in front of you and see if you can do it. You can't even hang a feather in front of you, and yet our Lord hangs something that weighs that much. And this is just getting started. This ain't counting all the other planets that are 50 times bigger than that. He hangs it all on nothing. Amen? Man, do we think about that when we wake up sometimes? We need to. Amen? Well, we don't wake up and say, oh, man, Lord, I hope the sun comes up today. Man, I'm worried about that. Were you worried about that this morning? Did you see all those dead squirrels out there today, that big pile of dead squirrels out there by the road when you came into the church, that big, that big pile of dead birds? I didn't see them either. You know why? Because there isn't a dead pile of squirrels and birds out there. You know why? Because our God is awesome and he feeds them all. Amen? Amen? So if he can make the earth go around the sun at 600 million miles every year and you can say happy birthday, he can certainly feed the squirrels and the birds and everything else. Amen? Our God's an awesome God. All right, go ahead to number three. All right, so let's look at how much the earth's oceans contain. So I was curious about that. And they contain, listen to this, 324 million cubic miles of seawater. So if you were to take a, a gigantic plastic cube or acrylic cube like they use for those fish tanks, aquariums, and you were to make it a mile long, wide, and high, you would have to fill up 324 million of those just to be equivalent to how much water is in the sea. That's not counting all the rivers and all the clouds and all the water that's uh, in springs and everywhere else. Man, think about that. All right, let's go look at the size of the earth now. All right, the size of the earth. Let's look at this for a second. The circumference of the earth at the equator right now is around 24,900 miles, slightly less at the poles. Now, the earth spins, it rotates at 1,038 miles an hour. Think about that, to do a 24-hour rotation. So there's got to be all kinds of laws in place so that we don't sling off and fly off the earth. Amen. Have you ever noticed when you see two people in the back of a truck and that truck is going 55 miles an hour down the road 
and you have two people in the back of that truck tossing a ball back and forth to each other, why is it that that ball just doesn't fly that way? Because the ball is moving the same speed that you are because your feet are on the truck and that truck is moving. Well, it's the same idea with our planet. When you jump up, you just don't go fly away because you're moving at the same speed. Amen? God put all that in place. He thought about all that for us so that you don't have to. Our God's an awesome God. Amen? Think about this. Man, when, Joseph, when Joshua prayed and said, Lord, when he was chasing the enemy, he said, Lord, let the sun stand still at Gideon. Remember that? And the Bible says the sun didn't hasten to go down for almost a whole day. What has to happen in order for that to happen? Man, a man prayed put his hand on the very lever that can alter the universe, God Almighty, and it was God's will that day to say, yes, I'm going to make the earth stop rotating so the sun will stay right there so they'll have the light that they need to win the battle. Wow. And then the Bible says in Isaiah that he made the shadow go backwards on the stairs. That means he not only stopped the earth rotating, but he made it rotate the opposite way to do that. And that all took place because of a prayer. Don't tell me that prayer can't do anything that God is willing to let it do. Amen? And that's why we pray according to his will and not our own. But our God is an awesome God. So keep that in mind. When you pray, you're putting your hand on the very lever that can alter the entire universe if God so desires it to happen. Our God is an awesome God. Amen? Boy. Think about that. The earth travels around the sun at around 66,000 miles an hour. I don't know about you, but you've got to pay attention when you're doing 80 miles an hour down the road. Amen? Boy, think about all the attention that God pays. You know, NASA scientists that are pagan say that the universe is such a meticulous, well-oiled, perfect machine. In fact, it's so precise that NASA computers can rewind our stars and tell you where the, where, where the constellations are at on any given day and any given month. They can tell you exactly where they were in the sky. That's how precise and well-oiled machine that God has made for us. Wow. Awesome. Amen? All right, go ahead. Let's look at the, uh, the actual scale of the size of the earth compared to the other planets. All right, so, so far, you said, well, Brother Dave, you, you told us, the, the question was, behold, the nations are a drop from a bucket and our Canada small dust on the balance. Behold, he taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. It, it doesn't look like, doesn't look like our, we're too small. Well, why would God say what, he just, what, what I just read? All right, go to the next slide. Oh, now, now we're getting a little bit smaller. Can you see that? Is, 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 is all this stuff in the way? Let me move it in case it is. All right. You see right here? Our earth is right here. Now, from God's perspective, you're beginning to understand why the Lord would say, Behold, all the nations of the earth are as a drop from a bucket and are regarded as small dust on the scales. And then you think about how small you are on the planet. Amen? All right, let's keep going. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here, here's our sun, and here's our earth right there. Can you barely see it? Right there. So let me read that to you again. Behold, the nations are a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust on the balance. Behold, he taketh up the aisles of the very little thing. All the nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him as less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? Wow. Amen. Man. So let's go to the next slide. All right. And you can fit one million of our earths inside the sun if it was a big jar. That's how big our sun is. Wow. Man, our, 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 you can put 100 earths wide across the sun. Our sun is almost a million miles wide. That's how big it is. Wow, right? And, oh, well, we're just getting started now. Now when you think about the sun, but he's got to keep that thing running too, amen? Boy, we worry about running our electricity, do we not sometimes? And yet, man, the Lord keeps that big old ball of fire going. We're going to learn about that as we move. All right, let me see here. Um, go ahead to the next slide. All right, some fast facts about our sun. Stay right there for a second. All right, go, go to slide number 11. All right, the temperature of the sun. The surface of our sun, listen to this, is about 10,000 degrees. Your mother's stove or your stove at your house probably goes to 500 degrees. You can bake a turkey in it. Could you imagine 10,000 degrees? That's just the surface of the sun. 
Now, the temperature at the center of the sun, listen to this, is approximately 15 million degrees Kelvin. And then you probably looked at me like you're looking at me now because I had the same look on my face. What does that mean? And it means this, that inside the sun, that is about 27 million degrees. You can't comprehend how hot that is. 27 million degrees. This temperature is sufficient to sustain thermonuclear reaction. And as a result of the temperature of this thermonuclear reaction of the sun, the energy the sun produces, listen to this, listen to this, man. The energy the sun, our sun produces is 383 billion trillion kilowatts. Or to put it another way, that's equivalent to the energy generated by 100 billion tons of TNT exploding every second. 100 billion tons of TNT exploding every second. And God keeps it running every day. And that's just our sun. That's not counting all the other trillions and billions of stars that he made. Boy, don't tell me our God's not an awesome God. He is, amen? To help us understand this a little bit better, think of it this way. If you can store all the energy, no matter how it was produced, like the, the wings of a fly, if you could harness the energy of that, anything and everything that produced energy, nuclear bombs, motors, cars, whatever, and you were to take all the energy of the world and, and store it for 7 million years in a gigantic battery, 7 million years is what they come up with, scientists, they say that that battery would run our sun for one second, for one second. So much for human effort, right? Now I always love this illustration. When you go, when you when you hear humans working and tinkering, it's always a bunch of noise and busyness to, to produce lots of fruit in our life, cars and busyness and this. But when you go into a orange orchard, now let me invite you to go out there if you can, and just man get permission from the owner and go out in the middle of it. Man, it is so quiet, but all around you is fruit, fruit that's not produced with any noise, a tree that's resting and doing what God designed it to do. We also need to rest in the Lord and let the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus live his life in and through us and let him do in and through us what he's designed us to do. And that's to rest in him. That's to trust in him. That's to depend on him 100% and realize that he is living his life in and through us and that we can't, but he can. Amen? Amen. See, where you can't, that's where the Lord begins. Amen? Boy, yes, indeed. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's look at the size of our sun now. Now, remember, keep in mind that verse, the nations of the earth are as a drop in a bucket. Go to the next slide. All right, now, this is our sun compared to the other stars, our suns that God made in the universe. And right there is our sun, right there. This right here says Jupiter is one pixel on this screen. The planet Jupiter is one pixel on, our, on this screen. So this is our sun compared to one other star that God made. So are you getting the picture that all the nations of the earth, there's a drop from a bucket and there's small dust on the scales? And then you think about us, we're like little tiny specks of dust on a, on a dust ball. And yet our God loves us that much that he knows every hair in your head and that he came and became one of you, just like us, and died in our place because he loves us. He took on the form of humanity for all eternity. That's the shape that he took on. Christ incarnate, God Almighty in the flesh, amen? Jesus is fully God, 100% man, 100% God, the God-man, amen? And he, he came to us. And our God is an awesome God, amen? Boy, but just think about all the things that he does. Go to the next slide. Boy, here, here we are now. Now, this right here, if you can't read it, it says the sun is one pixel on the screen. Jupiter can no longer be seen with our sun compared to these other suns that are out there. Betelgeuse, that's a famous star. Look how big it is compared to our sun, though. Wow. You know, our sun makes up 98.8% .8 of the total mass of our solar system. So if you take all the material that makes up our solar system, Pluto to the sun, it makes up 98.8% .8 of the entire mass. That leaves 1.2% of the mass left. That 1.2% mass is made up by all the other planets, the meteorites, the meteor belt that goes around our solar system. Just 1.2% 1, 1 is the rest of the material that makes up our solar system. Now think about this for a second. It blew me away when I thought about this. The Earth makes up approximately, out of that 1.2% mass, that material, that it all, all it makes up, it only makes up 0.1%. Our 
earth only makes up 0.1% of that 1.2%. And we saw how much they think the earth weighs. That little dust ball weighs that much. Think about everything else that he's made. Amen? Man, our God is an awesome God. Boy, he is. All right, go ahead to the next slide. Our solar system. All right, from the sun to Pluto. Now, people say Pluto is not a planet. Well, when I was in school, it was taught to me as a planet, so it's a planet. Amen? Amen. When you teach it, you can call it something else, all right? All right. Now, the size of our solar system, the sun to Pluto is approximately 3,670,000,000 miles. 3 billion. Man, 670,000,000 miles. Man, that's a long ways. Amen? Now, we measure distance when it comes to space in the universe by what? Light years, right? Now, light travels at 186,000 miles a second. Light travels 7.2 five times around the earth in one second light travels 11,160,000 miles in a minute and 669,600,000 miles in an hour now listen to this we measure the universe by light years that's the ruler that we use how far does light travel in one year brother David travels 5.8 trillion miles think about that how big is a trillion brother David well let me give you an idea one million seconds one million seconds is 11 and a half days ago. A billion seconds is the year 1983. One billion seconds is the year 1983. Well, Brother Dave, what is a trillion seconds? Oh, boy. It's astronomical. And you're talking a thousand billion. A thousand billion makes a trillion. Man, a trillion seconds ago is the year 29,678 B.C. Did you hear that? A trillion seconds is 29,000 years. That's how big a trillion is. And this country is like, what, $16 trillion in debt? Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Think of it this way. It would take more than 10,000 18-wheelers to transport $1 trillion $1 bills. Did you hear that? Just for one trillion dollar bills, it would take over 10,000 18 wheelers to transport that amount of money. That's how big a trillion is. If you were to stack a trillion pennies, it would go 986,000 miles into the sky. That's how big a trillion is. You have 100 trillion cells in your body. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. And guys, I'm doing a pitiful job. A pitiful job. I can't even touch the surface of how awesome God is. Wow. Man, I want to show you some pictures now. We're going to go out now. We're going to go out. Now, listen, these are just approximate. I'm not going to say any of this stuff is factual that I'm going to show you, but I do want to show you what the Hubble telescope has seen. Things that King David and all those people in the Old Testament didn't have a chance to see, but yet David looked up into the heavens and said, man, the heavens declare the glory of God. Boy, do they not? I had one person say, you know, when you're looking at all those stars and it's really dark and there's no light pollution and you can kind of see the Milky Way, he, he said, I like to think of it this way, Brother Dave. I like to think of it, th those are pinholes in heaven's floor and all that glory is shining through. Amen? Man, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen? Boy, they do. And they didn't have a clue. They didn't have a clue with what we know today. And yet they knew God was awesome. All right, let's go. Let's look. This is called Luminous, or the North Star. Listen to this. This star produces more energy in six seconds than our star, our sun, does in one year. It produces more energy in six seconds than our star, the sun, does in one year. Can God keep your electricity on? Amen? Boy, it's good to think about God like that, amen, outside the box. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, this is called the Sombrero Galaxy. They say that this galaxy is 28 million light years away. Guys, 28 million light years away times that by uh, 5.7 trillion, and then you tell me what that number is, okay? Wow. What is the Bible? Why, why would God put that out there knowing that everybody in the Old Testament couldn't see it? Why would he put it out there? Why would he make that so that nobody could see it? Because the Bible says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of man to search out a matter. Amen? Boy, and the Bible says he's created all these things for his glory. You know, when somebody goes to a car lot and they, they pick a green car, why do they pick that color? 
because that was their sovereign choice, right? Why does God do what he does? He doesn't have to tell us because he's sovereign, amen? But praise the Lord, he does let us in on so many things so that you can know him, you can have eternal life, and you can go to heaven and have that as your home forever. Praise the Lord, amen? Boy, this Bible is like a deep ocean that you can't even find the bottom of it, but yet it's, it's a book that a little kid can come and take a drink of water from and be satisfied in the Lord, amen? Boy, let's go to the next one. All right, let's look at uh, the Whirlpool and the Eagle Nebula. Now, they say the Whirlpool galaxy on the left, kind of like what our galaxy looks like, they say. And they say that that's about 31 million light years away and that this Eagle Nebula is about 6,500 light years away. And they say that this nebula is about 4 trillion miles high. Boy, wow. All that's out there. All of it's out there. And yet we don't even wake up and consider how awesome God is sometimes. All right, go to the next one. Bar spiral galaxy. They say that this one's about 69 million light years away. Boy. All right, go to this next one. Uh, the pair of galaxies. Now, it looks like these galaxies are colliding together, but they actually, what the Hubble telescope did was, because space is so big, they had to take these pictures in sections, and then they put them together. So they took a picture, they moved the telescope, took a picture. So they did this with each section of the sky, and they put it together. So that's why it looks like they're colliding. But they say that these, these two galaxies are about 114 uh, million light years apart. Now, guys, this is all guesstimation, because I do know that when you go into outer space, that light does get refracted. So, guys, these are all just guesstimates. But, but I wanted you to see what God has put out there, because he is so awesome. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, there's a polar galaxy. They say that this one's 130 million light years away. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, the cluster of galaxies. There, so there was this one spot where they could see some lights, and they said, Let, let's just zoom in on that little dark spot where you can see barely see those lights. And when they zoomed in, they saw all of these, and every one of these are not stars. Every one of these are galaxies that God made. Now, our galaxy has about 450 billion stars in it. Now, to give you a comparison to how big our galaxy is to our solar system, from the sun to Pluto, if the sun to Pluto was a quarter, an American quarter, right? That represents our solar system. And you were to put it on the ground right here. The, our, 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 this our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, would be the rest of the whole North American continent compared to that quarter. All of Canada, Alaska, every, all, all 50 states would be the rest of our galaxy compared to that quarter. That's how small we are. No wonder the Bible says, man, all the nations of the earth are a drop from a bucket. But look at the love of God to come to this planet the way he did for us, for you, for me, for the world. Wow. All right, go to the next one. Now, these are supposed to be the thir farthest galaxies away that the telescope has taken a picture of. And they say that these galaxies are 13 billion light years away. So take 13 billion times that by 5.8 trillion, and when you come up with that number, that's how far away they say these galaxies are. But the point is, God put all those up there for his glory. Amen? Look how awesome our God is. Wow. All right, go to the next slide. Now, this is called the Whirlpool Galaxy. This galaxy is a galaxy that kind of looks like our Milky Way galaxy, the scientists say, our astrologers say. Now, they got curious. And somebody said, hey, let's take the Hubble, this high-power telescope, and let's zoom it into the middle of this picture, and let's see what, what image comes out of the picture. Now, guys, I'm not into images, and I don't want to read anything to anything, but it is, is kind of curious to what it looks like. Go ahead. Now, I don't know about you, but it looks like a cross to me, kind of. But that was what was in the very center of the Whirlpool Galaxy. Man, and God did all that. Amen? Now... This next slide that I want you to see before we turn there is probably, man, the greatest reality. Well, I shouldn't say the, it is the greatest reality in all the world. This next slide is going to show you a picture of justice, God's holiness, God's wrath against sin, but he's also going to show you, also going to show you a picture of God's love, God's grace, and God's forgiveness. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? The Bible says it's his will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants people to be saved. His desire is for all to repent 
and to come to know him. Amen? Boy, he does. Go to the next slide. Boy, he came all the way from glory for you. Amen? Now you think about how awesome our God is. Think about how awesome our God is. Think about this for a second as you consider this, as you consider this picture. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, man, he laid, he laid uh, it, it says, and there was no room for him in the inn, and they laid him in a manger. Did you, hear what, did you hear what the Bible says? There was no room for the Lord Jesus in the inn. Now, we just got done looking at all the space that God made, amen? All the space that he made. You can't even, you can't even, with your brain, go how, how far that is, and yet the Bible says there was no room in the inn. The God that made all the room in the world had no room for his son in the inn. Think about how humble our Lord was. Man, to come and, and to see how small we really are compared to everything else that he's made. How humble is our Lord, amen? And yet our God made a heart for him to fit perfectly in. Boy, he has all the room right here. He'll fit in there perfectly, amen, if you invite him into your heart. He has all the room in the world, and he can fill every bit of it and then some and satisfy you for now and between eternity, amen? Boy, I think about this verse. John 19, verse 28, Jesus on the cross said, I thirst. The one that made all the water, 324 million cubic miles of seawater, not counting the fresh water, on the cross said, I thirst. Why? Because he was drinking your damnation dry. Hey, Amen. Can, can Father let this cup pass from me? Remember that cup? What was that cup? Why did he want that cup to pass from him? But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Remember what he said? And that was the cup of our sin. That was the dregs of, our, of God's wrath. And he went to the cross and he drank our damnation completely dry so that you and I could have eternal life and have heaven as our home. Amen? Amen. Boy. Now let me just tell you one last thing and I'm done. The Voyager, the satellite that they put uh, uh, a representation of what humanity looks like. It's a, a person that looks like this. And they put records and different things, and they sent it out there. Well, it, it went way past Pluto. So it's gone three, over 3 billion, 600 million miles right past Pluto. And they said, hey, we're about to lose the signal, so let's turn this thing around and take one more picture of the Earth before it gets out of here and we lose contact with it. Man, I tell you what, I believe that the Lord had that thing turned around. The Lord made, that mechanic, made, made all the mechanics of that thing work to take the very picture that you're going to see. Go ahead to the next slide. Now you're saying, Brother Dave, what in the world? Can we turn these lights out real quick? Just real quick. Can we turn these lights off real quick? Do you, do you see this thing right here? It looks like a beam or a ray of light. You see this right here? You see that little dot right there? Well, this, this little thing that looks like a ray of light is a ray of light. It's the ray of our sunlight. It's a sunbeam. And in the middle of that sun being, have you ever been in your house and saw the sun reflecting through the window and you can see those little dust particles floating in the sun being? Well, that's earth right directly in the middle of that sun being. We're so small to God, man, he put earth right in the middle of the sun ray. And yet our God tells you all the hairs on your head are numbered. Not one sparrow falls to the ground. And you think about how thick the forests are. You couldn't keep up with all the birds if you tried. And yet not one falls to the ground that he's not aware of because you're worth more than many sparrows. In other words, there is nothing that happens outside of God's knowledge because there's no knowledge that exists outside of the Lord. Amen? And because no knowledge exists outside of the Lord, he controls everything. And the Bible says that all of your days were written in his book before there was even one of them. All the days of your life were already written out. God's providence already has put the pieces where they need to be, and they're going to move exactly the way he wants them to move. He has everything under control, even when we sometimes feel like we're not under control. Amen? Now, this is easy to preach, but it can be difficult to live. But I pray with all my heart that God has used this today, man, just to show you all the awesome things that he takes care of every day. So when you think about the Red Sea and the crossing of the Red Sea and that mighty miracle, how awesome that was, but what, what miracle is even better than that? Man, him running the sun every day, keeping that thing running and all the other things running that he does on a daily basis, let alone all the other trillion things that we can't even talk about. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed.
every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, thank you so much for this time. And Lord, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and we thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray now, as we're about to play, and as the piano begins to play softly, Lord, I just pray with all my heart that you'll encourage your people today, that you'll strengthen your people today, and that, Lord, you'll truly be glorified and your word will be magnified and lifted up today in their hearts. These altars are going to be open for prayer. Maybe there's somebody in here that's been praying about joining the church and you want to use your gifts and calling here because you believe that God's led you here. Man, you can come forward and I can tell you how you can join. You got to be, you got to know that you're repentant of your sin and that you put all of your trust in Christ and that you know that you're saved, you're born again. And you've been baptized by immersion. We'll come and we'll talk with you. And then after that, you can become a member of our church. Maybe there's someone here today that just need to pray for family. You got lost loved ones. Then you've got burdens, you've got sick loved ones, you've got a lot on your mind. These altars are going to be open. But I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, our awesome God, man, he loves you. Man, he cares for you. He died in your place. He took all of your sins, past, present, and future, and he downloaded them into his body. And he bore all of God's wrath in your place so that you wouldn't have to. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? If you want to be saved today and God's revealed to you that you're lost and that you need to repent and that you need to trust him, I want you to right now, without no one looking around, I'm not embarrassed you, I'm not calling you, but I want you to raise your hand and say, Brother Dave, I want you to pray for me. I want to be saved today. Anybody say that at all? Raise your hand right now. Anybody? All right. Christians, these altars are going to be open. The hymn is going to be 435. Let me encourage you. If God has spoke to you today, man, thank him for speaking to you. Ask God to, man, do whatever he's revealed to you. Ask God to do that in your heart, in your heart today. If everyone would stand, these altars are open. Come. Don't leave here unchanged today. And the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Man, cast your burdens upon him. And the Bible says, pour your heart out to him. He wants to hear from you. glad you came to church today? Amen. I hope so. I'm going to ask my, my brother, my brother Larry, uh, if he will close us in prayer today. And uh, we're still praying for him. Amen. <laughs> praying that he'll get better looking than me one day. But anyway, <laughs> all right, let, I'm going to ask my brother to close us in prayer.